So welcome listeners to another exciting Minecraft podcast episode. My name is Kimberly Quinn and I have here with me Mr. Nathan Daniel and and just an awesome person that that um I met in our Rising Tide Connection Mastermind group. We've been fast friends ever since. And I'll tell you a little bit about Nathan. Nathan is the founder of the Real Estate Referral Revolution. And I'll tell you, he's absolutely an amazing person. And, and why I invited him onto the, the podcast was due to a conversation we had in downtime at one of our conferences. And also Nathan's talked about it at the conferences. Something called uh, Be the Pebble Movement. And you can see the representation on Nathan's t-shirt. So I'd like to give you a, a big welcome, Nathan. Glad to have you. And let's let you take it away. Well, cool. Well, thank you, Kimberly. I, I greatly appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. And hello to all the listeners out there in the Minecraft verse. Uh, I'm excited to talk to all of you. So thanks for having me today, Kimberly. Appreciate oh, I'm it. So super pumped. So so Nathan, I know for me, um, you absolutely captured me with the story. I'm going like, to chill up my neck like right now because it's such a good story. And I'm not sure, and like you see the t-shirt, but let's have you fill us in yeah. on, on how you came up with it. So, so um, okay, so Be the Pebble, we'll start there. How about we, we can talk about that? So um, at a very young age, uh, I, I, I guess I've been very ambitious. I was, uh, I think I was an adult at like four years old <laughs> and, and just quickly just wanted to do big things. And uh, when I was 14 years old, started my first job and, and kind of got into things. And what I what I started seeing were patterns where I started, I would always latch on to a mentor. OK, and so uh, very early on, this one mentor handed me thing is back whenever I was in network marketing and stuff. And he he handed me a little pebble and it was about like this and it was green. And and I carried it with me, he said, always carry this with you. It means prosperity and all, all sorts of different things. I had no idea what any of that meant, but it was a cool looking rock. And I was like, sure, why not? I'll keep it in my pocket. So that was my first introduction to it. But along the way, I started um, looking at my career and went through so many different changes and stuff. But uh, one day, I'll, I'll just jump ahead a little. And, and one day I was sitting in uh, Chicago Midway Airport for anybody in Chicago, shout out to everybody there. But uh, I tell you what, like when you're in Chicago, I lived there for a period of about six months in my early 20s. And I tell you what, I was at the airport from the time I checked in, like at the front of the airport until the time I got to the gate, this massive like fog storm rolled in. Right. And it just settled right over Chicago. And so I was I was coming from a conference in Chicago and I was scheduled to be a keynote speaker on stage the next day in uh, in Oklahoma. Well, as you can imagine, with a fog storm like that, everything was grounded. And this is back in January of 20. And uh, I can't like it, it was just crazy because all of a sudden people start keep continuing to flood in and flood in and flood in. Flights are grounded. Flights are being canceled. Lines are incredibly long. And so I grab my phone and I grab my headphones and I start walking around and listening to music, listening to audiobooks, and get a little tired from that because I'm doing laps around the terminal. And I was like, fine, I got to sit down. So. On my way back to sit down, I look up and I hear this thing like called coronavirus or something is going around and I see people wearing masks. I have no idea because I don't watch the news. <laughs> so I sit down and get this chair and I start watching a movie and and my ears are getting tired. You ever have that moment where you're like ears get tired from wearing headphones or something too long? So that was me. And so I took him out and I was just like, all right, I'm going to take a breath, look around. And I started noticing everybody had taken their phones out, even families. And they're sitting there like looking at their phones and they're just watching movies and not really paying attention to each other right around them. And I, I look over to this guy next to me and I was like, eh, what else am I going to do? So I turned to this guy sitting right next to me in this crowded airport and I said, hey, man, what's going on? And so we engaged in a conversation and, you know, the niceties and stuff. Oh, what do you do? Where are you going? All that kind of stuff. And uh, he asked me the same thing. And and, he, and I said, oh, I'm headed to do a keynote tomorrow. And he said, well, we got time. You want to give me your keynote? What are you talking about? And so I shared with him, uh, you know, about my journey and, and all this kind of stuff. And it was uh, it was interesting because about three quarters of the way through what I, my talk was, um, 
I see him kind of tear up. Like you, if you've ever seen those moments where like you're having a conversation with somebody and you can see him physically change, like that happened. Like, like there was a moment where all of a sudden he got really like teary eyed and, and so I kind of talked for just a minute. I'm like, that's, so that's my, that's my deal. And, and he was quiet for a minute. He's just kind of looking at me and he goes, <clears throat> Nathan, um, I guess we were meant to sit next to each other today because he's like, where you were at a year ago is exactly where I I'm at today. And he said, I'm on my way home right now to, to tell my wife, I don't know how I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because his job was killing him. He's traveling all over and it wasn't what he designed his, wanted his life to be. And he was, he, he was really hurting in a big way. <laughs> and so I listened to him for a few minutes and then I gave him some, like some, some wisdom. And it was crazy because as soon as I said, you know, everything's going to be okay. And here's some things that you can do on your way home. And here's the journey that I went through and what I was coached through, but, but take this and, and go and, and just take that journey. But I'm here to listen. Well, it's crazy. As soon as I said that the intercom came, came over and said, all flights have been cleared. And so we get up and we walk to our terminals and then we walk away. The only thing I know about this guy's, his name was Mike. And I, 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 I hate that I didn't get more information and follow up with them and stuff, but I think it was just a defining moment for me that what I realized is how important our story is. And that was the the beginning of my initial movement, which is called Be You and Be Real, which is living authentically. And for me, I think it was just more of a, um, a message to myself, like giving yourself permission. It's okay to be yourself. It's okay to tell your own story as long as you're willing to listen to others and hear what their story is too, mm -hmm. because I can get all, into a whole tangent on that and we can spend hours on this thing. But um, for me, that was the first thing. Um, and then there's an, another story where I can actually go into it. Like I was on an airport going actually to San Diego to one of the masterminds. And I, you know, most people get onto a plane. I don't know about you, but like most people get on a plane, either like, especially if you're like on one of the airlines that leave seats open and all that stuff, you like look down, you put your bag here and you're like, I don't want to sit next to anybody. I just want to like watch my phone or read or something like, you don't want to talk to anybody. Well, I didn't that this day and, and I hadn't put my headphones in yet. Well, this, this gentleman sits down right next to me and we started having a conversation. And the first leg was to Las Vegas from Oklahoma city. And it was two and a half hours we did not stop talking for two and a half hours straight. Wow. And we're still friends to this day. It was a crazy thing because we had an amazing conversation. He got off in Vegas because they had a trip there. And then on the way home, I'm like, no joke. He's on the plane, the very last person on the plane. He walks in, he and his wife and his wife ends up sitting next to me the next time. And then we just had great conversation on the way back. But it's just really cool. Like, the moments that you can have and impact each other by just sitting and talking to somebody, having great communication, listening, like there's so much to it. But uh, that, that was the start for me of like, okay, there's more to this be the pebble thing because our story matters. Oh, and I, I love the part too, Nathan, because like yourself, I've, I've met the coolest strangers out there. Mm -hmm. And it just, to me, nothing's an accident. And that's just, I don't, personally believe in it in coincidences it just it all comes together right and I love that yeah. you made a difference and we're willing to listen to somebody you never may never see again you're investing in somebody just authentically without looking to get anything back may never see this person ever again mm -hmm. there's something super cool about that yeah for sure well I I, I think you know, for me, as I as I started having these moments more and more often I think it was just I think we all have them right? I, I think every day we each have experiences, right? Like we each have experiences and we get to decide on how those experiences impact us. You know, I was talking to another coach about this in the past and, and uh, sharing this message with her and, and everything. And she goes, you know, that's interesting that, that you say we have experiences because I said, I don't think we really have any negative experiences. Like, and that was a little shocking to her. And, and I had to go on to explain because we all, ha we, we all have some, I would say baggage in our past and some of it can be seen as positive. Some of it can be seen as negative. Right. And yet at the same time, I think everything that happens to us and that experience crafts us into who we are today. Right. Like we all have the ability to make choices 
And that's where for me, like I like outlining how to be the pebble, like how to make an impact, like all of this stuff I actually outlined in the first step is actually how do you choose to show up each and every single day, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. No matter what's happened in your past, like it's the past. And yet we get to tell our own story of what does our past represent? So we get to make that choice on maybe a negative experience we had in the past. How did that actually shape us? How did that mold us to the person that we are in this very moment right now? And so we have that choice, right? Or um, we also have the ability um, to to be able to make a choice and actually like engage with somebody, right? Like you asked me to be on this podcast. I could have said no. Right. Or I sitting next to Mike in the airport. Guess what? I didn't have to turn to Mike and strike up a conversation, but I chose to. Right. And I chose to do that. And that's for me, that's the very first step. Like in order to be the pebble in somebody's mm-hmm. life, you got to show up and make a choice. I love that. I know that I love it's also I feel like it's it's almost a thing, Nathan, with the masterminds. We we talk about how we show up a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, in different, yeah. different contexts, because I think. And I like how you said, I like um, how you talked about like each day, because if we look at things like months down there, then it's Mount Everest, right? But if we just take a day at a time, I have a thing too, it's similar to what you're saying, where I have an intention every day, I'm going to bring success to everything I do, mm-hmm. even if it's changing our granddaughter's diaper, like I'm going to bring success to everything. Seriously, right? Every conversation, you meet a stranger and it, with the bar set to do your best and be open. I hear that you're saying it, that you're, 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 I think this is what I'm hearing from you, that you're kind of, your mind is open to everything mm-hmm. and kind of like attached to nothing. Like just, just bring it on and it's authentic. Yeah. I, I mean, I think if we show up in our authentic, I think the whole thing for me starts off with authenticity, right? Like if you give yourself permission to really be yourself, like we are all given gifts and talents and experiences to craft us into who we are today and embrace that, right? It's not good. It's not bad. It is what it is. And yet everything that has culminated to this very point to where you're listening to this podcast right now, Mm -hmm. you have the ability to take everything that you've learned and imagine in the next interaction that you have, it causes, you know, we talk about be the pebble and you see these ripple effects and all this kind of stuff. You can cause it like a massive ripple effect, like a tsunami in somebody's life with the smallest action right? With the smallest action that you don't even realize that you did, you can cause waves in somebody else's world. And where you think sometimes, you know, especially us entrepreneurs, we have the best intentions and all this kind of stuff and business owners like, we're going to go change the world. And then the thing that we go out and build and sweat and work on so much, and we we cast it out there and it's like a grain of sand in in somebody's pond. And we're like, oh, like let down. But like, we still got to have that interaction, interactive moment with them. And I think that's a that's a big part of it is like embrace who you are, live authentically to you and your message and your strengths mm-hmm. and your everything that you're made up of. Oh, I love that, Nathan. I'm also hearing from you, um, which is kind of neat hearing hearing the story again, because you take different things from it. You know, like the first time you you said it, I was blown away. I'm still blown away. I'm hearing a kind of an element of humility here, too, because mm-hmm. when you said the grain of sand, I'm thinking of in the ocean, even if you want to make it even more of a but that grain of sand, like you touch the guy in the airplane, mm-hmm. you know, and, and all the stranger contacts we have just, you, and you're probably not going to know what that, right. for that person. So, and I'll, I'll give the framework if that's okay. I'll just give yeah, the yeah, framework, yeah. Real quick, like the five steps that I, I was just going to go like, there anyway. Perfect. Yeah. I, I talk about with this. It's like, uh, to begin, like, you know, I got to get my, my little thing here. If you, if you're listening right now, I'm holding this pebble, I'm holding this little rock that I carry with me. And I have different ones of these that I take around and stuff. And just depending on the mood I'm in for the day, but like, I'll take this. And I want you to imagine, right? Like right here at the very top of the decision that I have to make, I have a choice, right? So Mm -hmm. I have a choice on what do I want to do? How do I want to go into this interaction? How am I choosing to show up? How am I going to take on this day? I have a choice. I can choose to hold on right? I can choose to hold on and I can grasp real tight. I can stay in my my comfort zone. I can, you know, I can just stay in my little cocoon, if you will, and not branch out, or I can make the choice. And then the second step is having the courage. The courage is to simply let go, right? You let go of the rock 
And that takes a tremendous amount of courage because you don't know what's going to happen, right? Like, like imagine you're this little kid standing next to the water and you cast this rock and you're trying to hit smack dab in the middle of the pond and you don't know where it's going to hit. Like your best effort to throw it out there, you could end up on the side or wherever. But if you cast it the right way, once it leaves your hands, it's out of your control. Right. It's out of your control and you're no longer in charge of that. And so it's got to land where it is because at that third, that third step, right? So we've talked about choice and courage. That third step is the impact, right? Yes. Like you've cast that out there. And at that moment of impact, it's a calm, still water because you've had no interaction with that in that moment. All of a sudden that rock breaks through that surface and, and you don't know what that's going to look like. It could be like, it, like we just said, the grain of sand that maybe causes a little movement in the water or maybe it could be a boulder dropping into somebody's, you know, pond, right? And it just causes all the water to be displaced because it was such an impactful thing, right? And 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 what you were just saying, like with Mike, I I have no idea. And that takes me to the fourth point that I talked about, which is faith, yeah. right? You've got to have faith every single day. Don't be tied to the outcome. Just be tied to the impact mm -hmm. and, and the courage that you've had to tell your authentic story and have faith that it is going to matter, right? We don't have any guarantees in life. We have nothing that, that says, oh yeah, if you do this, 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 and this, this is going to be your reward, right? right I right. think humanity needs more of, of us going out there and being authentically interested in others and, and having faith and knowing that, Hey, they may get something out of this and they may not, right? You listening to this episode right now, you may not get anything out of this. And guess what? That is absolutely okay. I just appreciate you being here and listening to this, but somebody else might be listening to this right now and it could actually be changing their world. And I will never know it unless somebody reaches out and says, I listened to this episode and I, I'm grateful for you, right? Which I'm not asking for that, but I hope you hear where I'm coming from. Because the more of those interactions that we have, the more times that we cast our stone into the world, we, we have the courage to tell our story. We make as many impacts intentionally as we possibly can. And we trust and have faith that that's going to happen. That leads to the final point, which is our legacy. Because I talked about dropping the rock earlier, right? I talked about dropping this rock and it breaks the water and that, but the water where it breaks through and causes the ripples, it doesn't stop there, right? The rock continues on. And so it goes through the water down into the pond, down into the ocean, and then it finally lands, right? It lands in the silt at the bottom or the sand in the bottom of the ocean or the pond. And typically when there's a lot of momentum behind that, the silt or the sand comes up and that's where it begins to settle on top of the rock. And we all have a time span, right? We're, we're not all guaranteed how much time we're going to have on this earth. And yet if you make those choices each and every single day and that that covers up, when you are gone and your time has passed, your legacy is going to be all of those moments that came before, right? That impact, the choice, the courage, and how you made other people feel along the way, whether it was small moments or giant moments. So that's what I mean by be the pebble in this whole movement. It's not about, you know, what I what I love to say, yeah, like I actually have nothing to sell really on be the like be the pebble. Like I would love if people came and followed and just just became a part of the movement because it's not about this movement. Like for me, it's about becoming your own movement. And that's what I want to inspire in others. Like don't join a movement, just be the movement. So oh, that's that. the, that's the journey of be the pebble and kind of the whole premise of what I talk about and, and go through with the, with the be, be the pebble movement. This is fantastic, Nathan. I love it too, because it's really just, there's a lot, of, a lot of mindfulness involved, a lot of gratitude involved. It's just about being authentic, being you. And there's going to be some gratitude in there, right? And and just throwing it out there, not knowing or caring if you get if you ever know about it, right? Just yeah. just knowing that you made a difference somehow, some way with somebody is kind of the reward, yeah. right? It, oh, a hundred percent. And it's, it, 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 there's gratitude attached to it because look, there's times where I'm going to be down, right? Like I, I'm human too. And guess what? Like those moments where I need somebody else, I may not be looking for it. I don't know where it's going to come from yet in that moment where I may be down, I may be in my Valley. I need somebody casting and pouring into me to help raise me up, to help keep me going. Right. And that requires, requires me to reach out or maybe they just happen to reach out. Like I had a text earlier from somebody that was just an encouraging text. 
you know, that's a dear friend of mine. He says, man, you've got this, keep going. Right. Like, right, 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 right. And, and, and so it's a reciprocal thing. And I think the more good that you put out there, right. the more of that you'll get back because you're conscious of it. I was just thinking of that, Nathan, it's, you can quote lots of things, but it's like the reap what you sow thing too. And and also, at least for me, I find there's a synchronicity to it. You know, when, when you, you're putting all that goodness out there, I cannot, I, I, I we wouldn't have enough time and probably not for you either. I, all the times I've been on the other end and not even necessarily deep, like just lost at an airport. Somebody mm. comes right by said, oh yeah, it's totally confusing. I just overheard you. You go that way, this way. And then you make the plane because some angel just came by and gave you like, three seconds like how many times that happened oh yeah well i i was talking to a dear friend of mine who's a speaker um earlier today and he was sharing a story with me and i was like man i, I gotta be able to share this so and he gave me permission to to share this but he was on stage and uh speaking this was about three years ago right like he he, he was out there he was talking and and this guy out in the crowd like i'm not even sure they met like in the three years earlier mm -hmm. well the company had him come back three years later and he gets up and he gives almost identical, the identical talk. And next thing you know, um, I guess afterwards, the guy came up to him and said, hey, let's, you know, he's going out, let's go have dinner or whatever. And so I guess a bunch of people got together, they went and had dinner. Well, the guy shared with him, he said, you know, I I have to thank you and I have to share this story with you. And he and he shared that um, he, uh, the, the gentleman that was in the crowd three years earlier, he was at a point in his life, probably four months earlier from the interaction that he was about to take his own life. Oh, wow. And something that, that my dear friend said on stage resonated and, and popped up in this, this guy's mind as he was about to, to go through that. And it forced him to stop right in the middle of what he was doing. And he, he reached out to somebody. And so like when I, I mean, I get goosebumps just thinking about that because that's the, that's the perfect example. No clue of what's going on because no, you're it. maybe talking into a crowd <laughs> and yet one thing resonated and it wasn't even in that moment. It was two and a half years later that something here inside of our amazing brains that we had clicked and said, no, this is what you have to do. In that moment, it popped up and saved that man's life. Right. And they got to have the interaction and he got to, you know, he, he followed through on the faith and knowing that it was going right, to be okay. Right, right. Like you got to hear that backside of it. So. Wow. Yeah. It's just, just, it just shows you we never know Nathan, right? Right. We never know. You never know. And there was actually a mastermind at a, a conference. There was a November thing I went to with our friend Jake. And one mm -hmm. of the, one of them was walking around with a t-shirt. I want to paraphrase. I don't remember the exact, but it said that it said, um, Everyone you you meet today is has a battle going on, mm, of which you uh -huh. will not know. Or I, I forget the exact words, but yeah. it, it it but isn't that the truth? Because we often walk around, I don't know if we're actively thinking everybody's more off, better off than we are, fine or whatever. But th th do we go around saying it all the time? People are walking around holding it together when underneath, who knows? It, it, I think our world puts on a duck on water approach. Yes. You know, it's, it's the facade on top of the water is okay. Like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a duck. I'm good. But underwater, you're just struggling to stay up, you know? And, right, and right. I, I think, unfortunately in the world that we live in, I think people are a little afraid to be vulnerable yes. and because in our world we're with social media and everything that's out there pushing at people, it's, it's not okay to be not okay. And right. right. It, like we all go through that stuff behind the scenes. We all go through that stuff mm -hmm. and that's being human. That's just going to say it a hundred percent. And uh, yeah, I would agree that social media is, is taking that to another level too. And just uh, people walking around so guarded mm -hmm. when in reality, when we're able to let our authentic selves out with safe people, right. Yep. It just gets, it just brings so much strength into the room. Yeah. And I'm, it's like, and I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one, like, like the, the, the gentleman you just told me about, I'm not the only yeah. one who thinks maybe it would be easier to not be here. Yeah. I'm not the only, I'm sure he's a, he's, he's somebody's son. He's maybe somebody's partner. He maybe, who knows? Mm -hmm. And imagine all the ripples of that. The fact that he chose to stay, it's less loss for all those people who love him. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And, 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 and even from that, that has a ripple effect. You know, I I've known several people, unfortunately, that have taken their lives and it was very tragic and very sudden and unexpected and seeing the uh, immediate family members impacted by that, like it changes them. It changes them for life. And it, it is an experience, right? And it's how you're going to take that experience and, and go from there whenever that does happen. But yeah, I, I think more and more, we have to be able to stop and have a conversation with somebody that you trust in that situation. Just pick up the phone, you know, people are there and people do care. People do care. And, it, it, and one last thing, Nathan, I'm hearing so much coming from just such lovely words of wisdom is I'm thinking how sometimes people think like with the kindness thing, you have to like, you have to do something big. I don't know. You don't have to be in the Peace Corps. You have to just walk around the world and show kindness. Right. Right. That is absolutely right. You know, I, I talk about this in my, my keynote, my talk, like I, I, I go through and I talk about, you know, they, they talk about a random act of kindness. I love the movie, Bruce almighty, you know, you know, or uh, Evan almighty, I think is what it was, but like they talk about a random act of kindness, right? Well, what is a random act of kindness? It can be anything, right? Like you've right. seen them on social media and stuff where, you know, people are going through drive throughs and they're like, hey, buy the person behind me the coffee and so on and so mm -hmm. on. And it gets like 80 people deep. Well, that's a, I mean, that makes viral news, right? However, you don't hear about the guy that's in the subway that stands up for the pregnant mom with the one kid. Right. You don't see that. That's not right. viral, right? Like, or, or honestly, like walking into a building, when's the last time you just smiled at somebody and said, hello, right? Sometimes we get into our mode and, and I call this speed boating, um, Anybody that goes to the lake knows what I'm talking about. And I tell this like, you know, one time I love fishing, right? I love fishing and I don't even care if I really catch anything. I just, right. I enjoy the experience. act of fishing, right, right, right. Yeah, the experience right. of fishing. Now, when I catch something, of course, it's always a blast, but, <laughs> but like standing out in the water one day, I was, we were at this lake and my wife and I were camping and I'm out at probably six o'clock. So sun's just about to come up and it is glass like it is so smooth mm -hmm. i'm hearing like birds start to wake up and chirp and all this stuff and fish are kind of starting to jump and so i'm out there just casting my line and enjoying it just enjoying the peace when all of a sudden i hear down probably about 6 30 in the morning nothing's out on the water yet it's still calm i hear this <laughs> you know and i knew a boat was coming and yet i'm in this cove where there's a dock and and there's a no wake zone well this guy totally ignored the no wake zone. I mean, he blasted down uh. full throttle and just blasted out of the code. Well, what did that do? Right. Well, he got to where he was going a lot faster. Good for him. But what did it do for me? Well, I didn't have my like waist waders on. I had my rain boots on. So oh, I had no. to then stop what I was doing back up out of the water because the water and the waves were so big, they were going to come knock me over. And so like, it's those moments where we speedboat people we just got to be conscious of that, right? Like yeah. if you slow down in our world, you're going to see the people around you and how you can have those random acts of kindness versus just slamming things down, right? And sometimes we have to do that. I get it. But more often than not, I, I think it's a choice that we do that versus just slowing down, enjoying the view, enjoying the ride and enjoying the people that we get to interact with day in and day out. Oh my God, I love that, Nathan. That could be another t-shirt. Like don't speedboat oh. people. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. You know, Absolutely. because had, had he had he made a had he made a, a different choice of being other conscious, conscious of others and mm -hmm. and, and the wildlife, so others all inclusive, right? Yeah. And slowed it all down, that could have been a whole different experience like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah, just fantastic. I love the whole thing. So, so Nathan, just to recap here, right? I, I wrote them down just to make sure I got it right. So we have the five steps to making an impact choice, mm -hmm. right? Courage to let go. That's yep. kind of a biggie. I think we hang on tight. Yep, we do. And then impact. You're going to make one. You may not know what it is. The faith to kind of know you are going to make an impact. You may just not know about it. And then the legacy. And that, that what I took from that was that we talked about the original ripple, which is kind of what I hung on from the first time I or just say it, then I kind of forgot about that part till this moment, actually, that you're not really done because no. it kind of does this to the bottom and you said stirs up some nice white sand if you're in the Bahamas or something and yeah. then lands and then lands on top or the muck in a pond. And it's, it's, 
it's kind of the gift that keeps on giving, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I'll, I'll leave everybody with this. Like if you go through a moment, like, and you really reflect back on your past and you look at, at your life and you look at those big moments, like you're going to recognize impactful moments, whether they're positive or negative in your mind right now that actually have shaped who you are today, which that's a compelling story. And you've got to be, be willing to tell that story because there's only one you out there. Right. right. There ever will only be one you because of the experiences that you've had up till this moment. It is your defined right. book of you. Right. And, and you're right. Like it continues on. That moment of impact is just one moment in your life. And we have thousands of those moments every single day. Thousands. So. And oh my God, it's so true. And I, I think. I think often it's easy to forget too, Nathan. I'm not trying to sound cheesy because I really mean it. I'm very authentic also. And I I can't even do anything that isn't. I don't even have the, like the tolerance for that. But that what we do for other people, we do for ourselves, right? So it's kind of like a savings account of self-love. Even though we're not we're not out to get something back, it just naturally fills us up. Like we naturally feel good about, like you said, the guy standing up for the pregnant woman with a child. He's going to yeah. feel good about that. Yeah. And it just keeps. Well, uh, would you rather have a lot of positive endorphins or negative endorphins? Right. There's a dopamine fix too, right? Maybe dopamine. the maybe yeah. the universe's way of keeping us doing nice things for each other. Maybe. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 I think it like very authentically, or um, and spiritually, I think is what I really want to say. I think mm -hmm. spiritually, um, at least for me, I feel incredibly aware of the connection to all of us when mm -hmm. I do one, whatever it is, just listening, it doesn't have to be big. And I feel like this, I don't know, it's hard to put words to, you know, it's just a connection thing mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to what keeps us all connected, right? Yeah. Fantastic, Nathan. I'm just, yeah. I'm so glad to to have had you with us. Did you, anything you want to sum up? Oh, I mean, I could keep going, but no, I think that's a, that's a good summary of today. So, but thank you for having me on and, and, and share a little bit about the be the pebble movement and, and, uh, and how to make an impact and in, in your world around you, because everybody has that, that opportunity. So. And I, that's, that's actually a good ending point right there is we, we all have the opportunity and it doesn't matter how much money you have, where you come from, what none of it matters, you know? And I don't know, this is probably the inappropriate move, but I'm going to do it because we're going into an election year and I don't know where your audience is, but I would challenge anybody here, right? I don't care what side of the line that you fall on. Listen to somebody. Don't just assume based on the other person's beliefs, you got to hear their story too. So because their unique experiences got them to where they're at and that's okay. Don't get angry at them because of their beliefs. It's okay. And we're not everybody's cup of tea. I always refer this back to, um, I have a, a, a journal that I published a couple of years ago that's called The Storyteller's Way. And in that, in that series, I talk about how at the end of the day, like the chapters of your life that, that you add up, like imagine your book is on the shelf, right? The interactions that we have, you are a book. And, you know, we're here talking today and you know what? I, I tell you what, if I glanced at the cover, right? Because a lot of people judge a book by its cover. You've heard that before. Right, right, and right. they keep walking on. Some people, though, will take an interest and they'll turn the book over and they'll read the summary of what is the book about. But then other, and then they might put it back on the shelf. Others might crack it open, read the first chapter and then the next chapter and the next right. chapter. But don't just, don't judge a book by its cover based on what's on the outside, right? Like take an interest in people, communicate with people, care about people. And that alone is a is a is an act of kindness that sometimes you won't even know the impact that it has on somebody's life. I hundred hundred percent agree with you I, because I, um, I don't know. I think it's also it's not only a sign of intelligence; it's just a sign of all things good when you can actually hear somebody talking about the politics thing, not just smile and nod when silently you're saying, "Well, I know I'm right," you yeah. know, but and, and worry about your mind being changed. You don't have to change your mind. Just be, just be emotionally and cognitively available and yeah. listen. Yeah. Just listen. It, it, it just listen. Right. Sometimes yeah. that's what people need. They just need somebody to listen to them. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Well, thank you. Huge, big thank you to Mr. Nathan Daniel. 
I will have uh, Nathan's info below. And so if you yep. want to get in contact with him or. Yeah, you can follow me on, on social media, just Nathan Daniel on Facebook or uh, be you at be you and be real on Instagram. Um, and if there's any real estate agents that happen to be listening to this, if you want to find out how to make an impact in your community or small business owners, if you want to find out how to make an impact in your community, um, reach out to me. I have some th things that I could, uh, definitely help you with or go to, uh, uh, getmorereferrals.org and that would be a good way to, to get in touch. Excellent. I'll also put that down below. Okay. Fantastic. Right. Sounds good. Thank you, Nathan. Well, thank you, Kimberly, for having me. I appreciate it.